So this is log base four of 48 minus log base four of n equals log base four of six. So on the left side, we're gonna condense that to a single logarithm. Uh, since it's the subtraction of two logs, that is the equivalent to the division of a single log. So log base four of 48 over n is gonna equal log base four of six. So since they are already the same bases. They're both log of base fours. They're both log of base fours. Just like with exponents, if we can get exponents into the same base, then we just set the exponents to each other. If we have logarithms with the same base, then we just set what we're trying to take the logarithm equal to each other. So that just means that 48 over n equals six, and then we are going to try to solve for n and I can get, eliminate the fraction by multiplying both sides times n. So that gives me 48 equals six n divided by six. And we get n equal to eight. And does that make sense if I replace the n with eight in the original problem? So as I go up to the original problem, if I replace this n with an eight, it means the log base four of eight, that is possible to do. So that is the correct answer, n equals eight. Number nine, uh, we have the addition of two logs on the left side. They're both log base threes, so we are going to combine those together into a single logarithm through multiplication. So that'll be log base three of two x times seven equals log base three of 28. And since they're both, both sides of the equation are both log base threes, that just means 2x times 7 equals 28. Well, 2x times 7 is 14x, so 14x equals 28 divided by 14. And x equals 2. And that does make sense because we can take the log of 2. If I look in the original problem, we can take the log of 2 times 2. And so that does make sense. It is a real solution. Number 10. So this one is three times the log base two of X. So recall that we can take and reverse this three back to where it came from, which before it was broken apart, it was actually an exponent. So this is actually the same as saying log base two of x cubed equals log base two of eight. And now I have them both as the same base. So that means x cubed equals eight. And what cubed equals eight? Well, two, equals x, uh, two cubed equals eight, so x equals two. So the answer to that one is two. And then the last one, this is log base 10 of a plus log base 10 of a minus six equals two. So how can we combine those into a single log? Um, it's kind of funny they put the base 10 and wrote down a base 10 on this one uh, because remember that even if we don't have a base written down, it's automatically base 10. So that would be the log of a times a minus six equals two. So on this one, it's just not gonna be a simple matter of like we had on the last three problems that it's this log equals this log because the right side is does not have a logarithm with it. So we're gonna change this to an exponential function. So remember this is gonna be 10 because the log was in base 10 to the second power equals that a times a minus six 10 squared is 100, and go ahead and distribute this, so that would be a squared minus 6a. And again, it looks like we have a quadratic equation, so I will get it set equal to zero. So a squared minus 6a minus 100, that's gonna equal zero. And now we gotta think about how can I factor this? What are two numbers that multiply together to be negative? negative 100, but add together to equal negative 6. Hmm, can you think of any? So we've got, you know, 4 times 25, that is, would be a negative 100 with one of the numbers being negative, but that doesn't add to be negative 6. 
Uh, let's see. 10 times 10, that's not going to work. Uh, I'm not thinking of any, are, are you? So if we can't think of any, does that mean that there's no answer? Of course not. That means we just have to use the quadratic formula. So we're going to have negative b, which will be positive 6 in this case, plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared. And I'm not sure why it keeps doing that. So negative 6 squared minus 4 times a is 1. c is that negative 100 all over 2 times the 1. So 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 plus 400 over 2. 6 plus or minus the square root of 436 over 2. And we are going to have to simplify the square root of 436. So what perfect square goes into 436? Well, I know 4 definitely does. Uh, we could probably get something larger than that. So does 16 go into 436? Honestly, I don't know off the top of my head. I'm going to have to check that out. And it does not, so we can't use 16. I'm going to go ahead and use 4. So again, the square root of 436 can be rewritten as 4 times the square root of 109. It looks like that's probably the best we can do. So that'll be 2 square root of 109. So that would be 6 plus or minus 2 square root of 109 over 2. And divide everything by the 2 in the denominator. So that'll be 3 plus or minus the square root of 109. Now, we have to think about this. Is this a possible answer? So going all the way back to the original problem, uh, we have the log base 10 of a and the log base 10 of a minus 6. Okay, so square root of 109 is a little bit over 10, which means we cannot use the negative portion of that because we would have to be, we'd be taking the logarithm of a negative number, which we already know is not possible. So the actual answer is going to be just the plus portion of it. So 3 plus the square root of 109. If we wanted to estimate that, we could just take the square root of 109. And the square root of 109 is approximately equal to 10.44. So 3 plus about 10.44, and that's about 13.44.